Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I am Chef Sarah and today we're smoking turkey on a pellet smoker. We're gonna go through it step by step together and I'm gonna show you some tricks for your pellet smoker to make sure you have the best experience because I know for many people, smoking the turkey on Thanksgiving it may be one of the first times you've done it. So we'll go outside and do that in just a moment. Now our turkey, we have already brined in an apple cider honey turkey brine and that was in the previous video so if you'd like to join us go back and watch that video then come back and now we're ready to go we're also going to do a turkey paint that's what i call it it's a glaze for the outside of the turkey secret recipe i came up with in my catering company to make this finish that looks just like a magazine turkey all right so let's go outside to the pellet smoker and we'll show you everything you need to do to be ready for a perfect smoke So the first thing we're gonna do that we do with any smoke is make sure that we have enough pellets. Now we know that we burn pellets at about one pound per hour when the smoker is set to 225 degrees. For this turkey, we're going to be smoking it at 250 degrees. So we're gonna need a little bit extra. Another thing that I wanna remind you, if you are in a cold climate, if you're anywhere, especially in the holidays where it's snowing, you can go through a pound and a half if it's very cold outside. So I recommend buying a 40 pound bag of pellets for this smoke, especially since people tend to use larger turkeys. But if you wanna get a 20 pound bag, if you're gonna be doing a 15 pound turkey, that will probably be safe. We're gonna refill the hopper full of pellets. I'm using a competition blend today, but you could use apple wood, cherry fruit woods go really well with turkey, pretty much anything you like. I might just stay away from mesquite because it's you know very robust compared to a Thanksgiving turkey. Now I'm just gonna clean the pellet grill, you know, just the way you'd clean any grill. Gonna go ahead and preheat it to 250 degrees and plug our thermometer probe in so it's ready for when we bring out our bird. That's it, that's all you have to do, and now we're ready to go. Okay, now we're ready to do our turkey prep. Now we have a very plump turkey here because we have already brined our turkey. We did an apple cider honey brine in a previous video, so go check that out if you want. And now we're gonna make something to go on top of him before he goes in the smoker. I like to make a compound butter, but instead of using butter, which melts rapidly at high temperatures, I use margarine. So this is a kind of a product where it doesn't melt as fast and it allows everything to stay on the turkey. It makes a really gorgeous coating and we're not even using that much. If you're concerned about margarine, just know that they're not made with trans fats anymore. And if you wanna substitute butter, you absolutely can. You just won't kind of get the exact like paint look to it. It's kind of fun. So we start with our butter and then we have some garlic. Now, I'm gonna use real garlic that I put through a garlic press, but I know a lot of people are using this garlic puree product, and if you need like a quick time hack, you can use that too. I just really prefer fresh garlic. So I put it through the garlic press because it just comes out in no chunks at all, and a lot of that garlic juice gets into the butter and flavors it. And there's nothing better than garlic and herbs, okay? So there we go. Got him in there. And we're gonna add some other ingredients here. We've got thyme, just dried thyme. I always crush it up in my hands first to kind of wake it up. We've got paprika. This doesn't provide a whole lot of flavor, but it provides really gorgeous color. It makes the butter look really red. And then, uh, in the end, everything actually looks very golden brown. So we're gonna put that in there. Poultry seasoning, of course, it wouldn't be Thanksgiving and wouldn't be like turkey unless we had a bunch of poultry seasoning. And then I use salt and pepper. I'm using kosher salt. This is about a teaspoon. It's gonna make it really salty, but of course it's gonna go over the whole turkey. And some pepper, black pepper, just a bit. Now I add some fresh herbs. You can use whatever you've got going on in the kitchen because it's really just for color and it looks so dazzling and beautiful, but those fresh herbs don't always add a whole ton of flavor. So here's the ingredients. We're just gonna start mixing it up and you'll see. We've got our little brush here. 
and it really does just come out like a paint. It's so gorgeous. Again, you could do this with butter. It's just not really gonna give you this exact consistency, even if it's softened, because it's not quite as stable as margarine. Okay, so we're ready to paint. I just wanna make sure my legs are secure and the little plastic piece that they put here, that's what that's for, so you don't have to tie the turkey with poultry twine, so we'll do that. If you want to pin the wings, you can pin them in with toothpicks. Some, some people do that to keep it looking just perfect. And then you'll wanna start applying your turkey paint. And because we're not using butter, it's gonna give all of these herbs and spices something to hold on to so that they don't just run off the turkey skin, but they have an opportunity to bond with the skin and keep things looking gorgeous. Make sure to get in all the little crevices and I will say one thing, I do not paint the bottom of my turkey. I smoke my turkey breast side up, so I don't really feel like there's any reason to do that. Okay, so we painted it with turkey paint. What do you guys think? I think it's pretty cool, and you're gonna love when you see what it actually does. So let's go ahead and take it out to the smoker. Okay, here she is. Smoker is ready. I've got my probe here, and I like to put it into the thickest part of the breast for my temperature readings, okay? Little towel here for your fingers. Ow. I've got my water pan in. I always smoke with a water pan. It doesn't matter if it's a pellet smoker. The water pan is gonna help the smoke cling to whatever meat you have in there. So you can do whatever you like. I always use a small pan of water for extra humidity. They're all the way back. And close it up. Now, the number one tip that I can tell you about smoking a turkey on a pellet smoker is to cook to temperature. The bird is gonna be done at 165 degrees. Many people pull it at 160 because this big bird continues cooking for a couple minutes after you pull it out and it'll hit 165. If you want to know how to avoid a dry turkey, don't cook to time. They say 30 to 40 minutes per pound of turkey. That's the way you're gonna get dry turkey because you never know what's going on in there. Just watch your temperature probe and cook to 160. Okay, so we're gonna leave the turkey on the smoker. Don't open that chamber for about an hour to two hours. Then we're gonna begin spritzing with pineapple juice. I love these spritzers, you guys. If you're into barbecue, you know all those plastic spritzers from the grocery store. They always break. They keep, they're impossible to clean. I found these on Amazon. They're uh, a nice glass and I've used them so many times. They don't break. So I've got pineapple juice on the inside. That pineapple juice is gonna give a subtly sweet flavor to the skin. You can always use water if you want to, and we're just gonna spritz it two to three times during cooking before we hit 165 degrees. Okay, now we're all done. So you can see it's gorgeous, but it is gonna need a rest. And usually that's gonna be about 30 minutes to an hour, depending on the size of the turkey. I'm just gonna leave it here. You can tint it with foil if you'd like, and all those juices are gonna redistribute it, and then we're gonna be able to carve it. Here's the big moment, yay! Here she is now. She has rested, so she is not piping hot. You can see starting to be much more manageable to work with. And the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna cut off the plastic that they use to hold the legs together. And some really strong shears to do that. Do that. Bye. Okay, and then I'm gonna use a turkey slicer. These are only about 15 or 20 bucks. You can also use a knife. But if you guys spend any time with me, we carve a lot of meat around here. So it's so useful to have one of these and they're not very expensive. So what I like to do is I sort of start by loosening up the legs a little bit. Just here and then here. Okay, just so that we can kind of, we don't have to pull them fully away, but just a little bit away from the breast because that's the kind of meat that most people get really excited about. And you'll feel a bone down the center. 
And you're gonna cut this side of the breast on this side of the bone, and then the bone's in the middle, and then you'll go down this side. I hope that makes sense on the other side. So let's just get to it. that bone is right in the center and I'm just gonna take my knife and go swipe out and then we'll come around the bottom here Now we have one side of that turkey breast off. Go ahead and grab a plate. Start placing them on. I'm gonna slice this more up later, but there's one piece of it. Then we go down the other side of the bone. All right, and here's our other breast. Okay, and again, we're gonna slice those up further. Now I'm just gonna keep breaking this down. So I kind of do the legs. I'm just going in right where the thigh meets the leg. And then you can kind of do this part with your hands. It just sort of pulls off. Look how juicy that is. It's crazy how well smoked turkey performs. That is better than, than any roast turkey. Okay, and you'll just get more pieces. And then we'll go after these legs, because of course the kids like those. Look at that, it just comes right off. Like it's like Game of Thrones or something. Okay, and now I'll break down the rest of it. It's so easy, wing. And if you're concerned about the smoked turkey being different than, you know, the family is used to because it's smoked, I just wanna tell you one story. So the first year I told my father that I was gonna make a smoked turkey, he was so concerned that he went home and he made a turkey because he was afraid it was gonna be different and that would ruin Thanksgiving. And you know what, when he came, he had his turkey and we had our smoked turkey. People couldn't even taste the difference except for ours was so juicy. Sorry, dad, you know that's how that turned out. So smoked turkey doesn't necessarily taste greatly different than uh, the turkey that you're used to having. It's just so much more juicy. Okay, so that's those pieces. Now I'm gonna show you how we're gonna carve up the breast. And here they are. I just do it like this. You can do them really thin if your family, you know, prefers very thin slices, or you can do them thicker. Absolutely lovely. There we go. And you see, it's, it's still so moist, it's falling apart. I mean, this turkey cannot be beat. The combination of smoking a turkey and burning a turkey is just the turkey of your dreams. So, I'm running out of space here on my little plate. I should have had a turkey platter. Okay. It's so juicy. And it's a little bit sweet because we used that apple cider brine. But if you don't like apple cider, use a Cajun brine. How about that, you guys? Come on. So this whole project went together in about five to seven hours, depending on the size of your turkey. This is a little turkey now on Thanksgiving. I'm gonna do a big turkey because I'm the one who has to 
cook for everyone, of course. So you can see the meat is so succulent. This is the breast. This is always the part that is the driest and it's just unbelievably juicy. And because we use that turkey paint, everything is gorgeous, like the cover of a magazine. So I'm going to put the recipe below, but you guys know that you can always find a printable recipe on our recipe website urbancowgirllife.com. It's got step-by-step -step with pictures, so it's going to be foolproof for you. Now, if you like this video, please, please give us a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe so we can cook together again. We will be seeing you next time. Bye, you guys.